caught up with the First Minister a little earlier today. Alex Salmon, how would an independent Scotland be different? Well, it would be governed as the people of Scotland would wish it to be governed. You know, raise their own taxes, decide their, uh, their own spending priorities, decide whether or not to go into legal wars in Iraq. The answer would be no, incidentally. So there would be very substantial differences in the, in the nature of the policy formulation. There are some at the present moment. There would be a lot more if Scotland were independent. It would also be broke, of course, wouldn't it? Well, uh, you know, independent Scotland would be the sixth most prosperous country mm. per head in the OECD. I, I think that's a, a reasonable basis to start to be an independent country. We've got a trillion pounds worth of public debt in this country. How much would the Scots take? Well, the normal way to divide up debt would be either a population share or a GDP share. So uh, incidentally... How much do you want to take? Well, that would be about just over 8%, but incidentally we would have about 90% of a trillion pound asset in terms of oil and gas resources in the North Sea. But the birthright of any citizen of an independent Scotland would be about £16,000 worth of debt, or would it be more than that? Well, the assets would be much greater. See, the difference between Scotland's position is we'd have a share... Well, you know, you're, you're talking about the, the debt that the United Kingdom has accumulated. We'd take our share of that because we're part of the United Kingdom. We can't do anything about the mistakes of previous so, chances that it's checking. And you know the level of public spending in Scotland the last year for which records are available. Yes, and you also know that uh, Scotland's, what was fiscal, well, Scotland's fiscal position, fiscal position of four out of the last five years has been positive on the government right. e expended and revenue statement. And also, you, incidentally, Jeremy... You know, that the, uh, you know what the to, level of public spending was in Scotland. Yeah, and the level of revenue is, is higher, Jeremy. And I'm pointing right. out, those, well, well, the last not. five years, okay. 7 point The official figures are £62 billion pounds of public spending in Scotland. This is 2009 to 2010. Do you know what the revenues raised in Scotland were? Well, I, I know that in, in four out of the last five years, Scotland's well, been there the were fiscal 48. surplus. There's a 14 well, billion pound yes, gap. But, but Jeremy, the, there's a 150 billion pound gap in the United Kingdom. Relative to the United Kingdom, Scotland is in a stronger fiscal position. Let's look at uh, the reserves that your country would have available to you. If you take gold first off. There's about 310 tonnes of gold that the Bank of England is looking after. What share of that do you want? Well, normally the way on independence to do these things, and there's, there's a well-trod path, many countries have become independent, is you have the same percentage of assets and the same percentage of liabilities. So you want about 8% of the 300 tonnes of gold? That would be the, the normal way to put But incidentally, a country's resources, uh, we've gone past the mercantile period, Jeremy. Country's resources aren't backed by gold just as well, because as I remember, Gordon, Gordon Brown, Brown sold, sold most, most of it. it. Yeah. Uh, but you still want it. But the, uh, a deferred division of assets uh, and liabilities, mm. uh, uh, including the, the, the range of assets that Scotland has. How but would you get it north? <laughs> but generally, many, many countries, incidentally, hold their reserves in common, you know, through the Bank of International Settlements and other things. Oh, so that you might leave it at the Bank of England? Well, I mean, we've got plenty, plenty of vaults in Scotland, but a country's reserves are... What's there going to be, some sort of armoured train or something? Well, it would certainly be a lot better than the, the, the nuclear trains that go to Fazlane at the present moment, Jeremy. Let's look at the politics of it. You say that an independent Scotland would be a beacon of progressiveness. Mm. I think I recall Robert Mugabe saying something similar about Zimbabwe. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think, Jeremy, you can do yourself any great favours by comparing Scotland to Zimbabwe. No, I'm or, comparing or myself, you to Mugabe. Or, or, well, I was just going to say, or by comparing myself or any other Scottish politician to Robert Mugabe. Implicit I, I think in that is the idea Jeremy. that this is a one-party state. I'm sure, listen, I, I'm sure there's a, a star in Zimbabwe television, and I wouldn't dream of comparing you to that person. <laughs> say what you like, but, I mean, implicit in that assumption is it not, is the belief that there is really only one party that can rule Scotland. No, that, that's not the assumption. Scotland, Scotland is not just a multi-party democracy. Incidentally, we have more parliamentary Isn't parties competing than you, you have south of the border at the present moment. But Scotland has a system of proportional representation which ensures that minority voices at least have a chance of being regularly represented in our parliament. So but far from a being a beacon uh, of progressiveness, according well, to well, you, is, are there other progressive parties in Scotland? Yes, there are. I mean, we are supporting... The Labour Party, are they uh, progressive? Well, they're not particularly progressive, but sometimes in the past they've been progressive, but the Green Party are a progressive party. You were talking also about a social union. Mm. Isn't the best way to guarantee a social union a political union? 
No, I, I'm saying we can have political independence but continue the, the social union, whether it's institutional, sharing a monarch, for, for example, or the great family ties. Listen, Jamie, we'll even be able to watch you on Newsnight after Scotland becomes independent. Well, you can only watch part of the programme now. Well, it will be better because we'll have the choice of watching the whole programme because we'll have an alternative choice of a whole Scottish programme. And will you program. be paying the licence fee? Paid, well, we'll, we'll watch it the same basis as you, the Irish Republic, but we shall pay... Oh, we shall as pay. the Irish, they don't uh, pay. Well, yeah, but we shall pay for BBC programmes in the same way uh, as we'll contribute to uh, to buy anything else we choose to watch. But I assure you, Jeremy, you shall be a star so in an independent Scotland. And you won't be paying the licence fee? Well, we'll have a licence fee to set up a, a Scottish broadcasting channel. Exactly. Uh, and I, I'm quite certain we'll, we'll be wanting to purchase from the Do BBC. Do you think this is some of sort of series. charity? <laughs> the BBC. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I, 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 I'm sure that uh, in the BBC, charity begins at home, Jeremy. Alex Sermon, thank you. Great pleasure.